Hi, I'm Marco Scott and welcome to Rock Solid. We've got a lot to cover today, so let's get started. The best thing to do before playing is to warm up. Let's begin in a good playing position and start with each hand individually. Start nice and slow and keep bringing the sticks up off the rebound. Even at higher speed levels, keep those wrists and sticks coming up and stay relaxed. Let's try sets of four. Again, let's start slow and keep the beats even and relaxed. Make sure there's no tension in your wrist before playing faster. Now let's try sets of three. Same rules apply here. Relax. This is not a contest of speed. And the idea here is to warm up. With double strokes, it is extremely important, as it is with all rhythms, to keep your beats even and relaxed. The idea is to master the slow speed levels before getting faster. Even when playing at high speed levels, keep the wrist and sticks coming up off the rebound. If you're having problems playing your double strokes and keeping the strokes even, try accenting the latter half of the double stroke. This will keep you right on track and help build some speed. The four stroke rough is a fun exercise to play. It's just a flick of the wrist with an accent on the last stroke, but keep it even. Paradiddles, starting with the single, are excellent chop builders. Start nice and slow and keep the beats even. The double paradiddle, same as the single, start nice and slow and keep the beats even. The triple power diddle, same as the double and single, but try playing with a metronome. Keep those beats nice and even and solid. All right, let's take a look at the 
All right, let's take a look at the kit we'll be using today. The drums are by Remo Quadra Series. First rack tom is a 12 by 11. Second rack tom is a 13 by 12. First floor tom is a 16 by 16. And the one I'm leaning on is an 18 by 16. Just picked up this uh, Emperor top head for the uh, first rack tom. And it seems to give it a bit more uh, tone, you know, let's uh, hang out a little more for that smaller drum. Go really get that sound cooking on that top. Bass drum is custom 24 by 20. Pinstripe on the batter head again. And I like a nice hole out in the front, give that projection happen. Good for miking as well. Uh, the snare drum is actually a pearl free floater. And that's six and a half by 14, standard size. And it has got some amazing pop and uh, it just rocks. I'm very happy with it. All the hardware you see here today is Gibraltar. Uh, I say number one <laughs> in the way of hardware. They're really great. Uh, I used to have bigger kits in the past and I used the uh, rack systems and they are just the best out of all the rack systems out there. The clamps they make will hold your stuff solid. You don't have to worry about going to a gig and your cymbal arm falling off or twisting or something like that. They stay in place, they're rock solid. I believe in them 100%. As I say again, all the cymbals stand. Zildjian, number one, name of cymbals. First one over here is a 19 inch rock crash. Second one over here is a 20 inch uh, medium crash. The third one here is a 20 inch crash ride. And uh, over here I got a 24 inch power Z. That is one heck of a ride right there. Big bell, nice solid Z. Bing, bing, bing. Get some great definition out of that. And over here, this is a 20 inch China Impulse. I don't think Zilji even makes these anymore, but if you come across them, I'd say grab them. They've got a unique sound to them, and they just really cook. Hi hats are 14 inch platinum rock hats. They really got some good sizzle, and they, uh, they rock. Let's put it that way, okay? Okay. As far as sticks go, these are the number one sticks on the market today. These are Easton Ahead. These are uh, made of aluminum, not the standard wood, as you would imagine. Uh, they have an aluminum shaft all the way through with a nice plastic sleeve over the top so you don't bust your cymbals in half, which is kind of nice. And uh, they last, man, let me tell you. I, when I first started playing with these, uh, I met with Rick Grossman. And he said, hey, man, I got some sticks I'd like you to check out. And I said, well, what are they made out of? And he said, aluminum. I said, wow, what kind of idea is that? And uh, it was a great idea if you ask me. I was going through sticks like crazy. And uh, I just remember in the past, I tried all these other syn synthetic sticks. And they didn't have the feel, you know? When you lay into that snare, you're doing some nice rudimentary work. It just didn't work. And uh, it's amazing that he came up with a product that is not made out of wood that really kicks. Easton Sticks, number one. I said before that uh, I used to use some bigger kits, and now I've scaled down a bit. It seems like when you first start playing, everybody wants to go out and get that 20 million piece kit with a billion cymbals, and people can just look at it on stage and say, holy cow, look at that drum set. And uh, then it looks like people are looking at the drum set more than they're looking at you. Of course, that ego sneaks in there a little bit, sure. But uh, the main thing that counts when you're in a rock band situation is to be a straight ahead player and play those beats, lay them down flat, and play them for the music. Some music may be a little more progressive, some a little more laid back, but the idea is that you're keeping the beat. What counts is your eighth notes on your hi-hat, that one and three on a kit, and the two and a four on the snare. For instance, how many times have you heard this? Big deal, right? Your dark right is a big deal. <laughs> that beat right there, basic rock beat, is it about 87% of all the tunes you hear on the radio today. And that's pretty much a fact. Of course, there's variations on it or whatnot, but basically that's what we're dealing with. Eighth notes on the hi-hat, one and three on the kick, two and four on the snare, nice and solid. But what makes it so special? Well, each player individually has a certain style. Your little accenting is what's gonna add. The, everybody, the way any, any drummer touches the drums, for instance, if a different guy sits down and plays a piano, you can hear a difference between each player. Same thing with drums, even more so. You're using four limbs, putting them all together to make one solid beat. Let's check out some other examples of that. All right, you see the way I move to that ride symbol? 
and gave me the opportunity to get my hi-hats to open and close. I was playing eighth notes. Now the whole thing when you were uh, playing any kind of beat or anything around the drums for that matter is create a solidity factor. Really keep things solid. For instance, uh, playing a simple rock beat, one and two and three and four and. You gotta make sure when you're playing, let's say, a bass drum and the ride cymbal at the same time, that it's together and tight. You don't want that flaming effect or it's not gonna sound clean. It's not gonna sound tight. Same thing with the snare in the ride, one and two and. Make sure that pop is all together on the ride. Pop, pop. You don't want that flaming effect again or else you're gonna lose intensity. Going back to the hi-hats, when I went over to the ride, you saw my hi-hats going one and two and three and four and got it cooking over there. And it's the rhythmic feel. Again, solidity factor a must. It's following your right hand. It should be locked right up, left foot and the right hand. Good practice. One and two and three and four and. Now if you also saw, I took my left hand and started playing on the upbeats on the hi-hat. Thus creating that kind of effect on the upbeats of the beat. Uh, together with the right hand, it creates that 16 note feel and creates an excitability in the tune, but still holding the same tempo. Again, the way to really accomplish that is to keep it solid, laying it down flat. Let's take a look at another example. You'll find this one a little interesting. It's more of a triplet feel, and uh, you'll see the way the kick rebounds off the hi-hat, and in turn, the hi-hat rebounds off the kick. It's a back and forth kind of thing, ba-boom, 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 kind of like washing uh, a plate, if you will, that kind of thing. But it makes it flow, makes it nice, and the solidity factor is what we're going to be watching for here. So let's take a look. See how that worked out? Got the hi-hats copping on the upbeat. And you complement that basic beat, and you got a nice little rhythm happening there. Again, to anybody that doesn't have a metronome, go out and get one now, because you're going to regret it in the future if you don't learn. It's going to take time to get used to it. I busted about three of them. They drove me crazy. But once you finally get it, you're not going to want to play without it. I, believe me. I know what it's like. I just wanted to play drums, and I thought it was so easy. Get this thing, and you'll be really happy. It's going to lock you right up, and any musician will respect you for it, I guarantee. A couple of parting words on drum beats. Solidity is the key to anything you do. If you want to have a rhythmic pattern, that's great, but keeping it solid is what's really going to make it rock. And if you're in a band situation, you know that solidity is the key to any survival you got in a band. So good luck to you. Okay, check this out. Maybe you walked into a music store and you saw an ad on the board and it said the new hot band in town needs a drummer, but they're looking for double bass drum players and unfortunately you don't know how to play double bass. Or you walked into this club one night and you saw this guy going and you say, man, I can do that. I'm going to go home and get myself another bass drum. You put your other bass drum on your kit and you tried it out and you realize it ain't that easy. Well, welcome to double bass drumming. It's not the easiest thing in the world. I remember when I first started, trying to just get a simple 16 note pattern together was a real pain in the neck. Again, metronomes will help, but first, let's try working with that one. The basic thing we're going to try right now is working that left foot. I mean, you say, hey, you know, you do eighth notes and uh, sixteenth notes on the hi-hat, moving your left foot up and down, just move over to the bass drum, it's the same thing, right? Wrong. There's a different feeling to that left pedal, and anybody who's ever tried it will know what I'm talking about, and you'll find out in just a minute. Take your left foot, put it on that bass drum pedal. Bounce around a few times to get comfortable, but we're going to try to make it solid. You've got to lock that left foot up with that right hand. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to take our right hand, Play nice and slow eighth notes on the ride cymbal, and with the left foot, nice and easy quarter notes. All right, you want to lock up. Make sure that when that right stick comes down, that that left foot's locking right with it. Bing, bing, bing. Okay, so let's give it a try, shall we?
Once you feel that you got your left hand and your right hand together, it's time to move on. But remember, speed is not the key that we're looking for here. We're looking for solidity. Again, it's the most important thing, solidity and evenness. Playing with that click track will help right about now. If you want to practice nice and slow, make sure that your left foot and the right hand is locking up. If you got the click in your head, make sure they're coming down together right on the beat. Let's try adding the snare drum now. Playing simple rock beats, but using your left foot. Getting used to that movement, used to that pedal, because it's a lot different than the hi-hat, as I said. Let's give it a try. Alright, now we're really starting to get comfortable with that left foot, using it as a primary boom kind of thing. So that means you're building up some independence, you're building up some power in that thing to keep it solid. Keep it solid. That's the key word here. And once you get comfortable with the rock beat with the left foot and the metronome, you don't necessarily have to start right out with it because it's a little overwhelming. You know, if you try doing a backstroke and you put music to it and you never did the backstroke before, you're going to drown. So take it nice and easy. Get comfortable first, then add the click. You know, if you throw all these burdening things on, it's going to be discouraging. All right, so let's take it step by step. Now that we have the rock beat down, let's try putting both feet together. Your right foot's gonna be on the bass drum one, bass drum two, your left foot's gonna be on there as well. We're gonna play nice and slow eighth notes, and we're gonna double up the kicks underneath with sixteenth notes. So we're gonna play something like boom, 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 keeping that right hand eighth notes, sixteenth notes on the kick, but very slow. Some people get scared when you're saying you're doing, hey, let's do some sixteenth notes on the bass drum. Holy cow, how fast are we gonna go? Only as fast as you set the tempo. So let's take it nice and easy. Let's not use the click track quite yet. Let's get a little comfortable with it before we try it. Nice and easy, remember keeping it solid and even. Let's give it a try. Once you start feeling that things are pretty solid around and you want to add that click track, now's the time. You know, but just make sure you're comfortable first. And speed is not the key. Again, let me tell you, you are not looking for speed. The speed will come in time, I guarantee you. The main thing is that you get it nice and even and tight, you know? Make sure that right foot's coming out with the right hand now. Boom, 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 boom. Get it really solid. Then add the click and try keeping solid with the click even before you start moving faster. Because what's gonna happen if you start out a little too quick and uh, you ain't got it quite as tight as it should be, you're gonna tumble all over yourself, it's gonna end up sounding sloppy. So just take your time and I guarantee you, everybody wants to go brrrr, but just give it a little time. And once you got it solid, then you can speed up from there. Here's another rhythmic exercise you can try on your kicks. Again, as I displayed before with the rock beats, we were nice and straight, and I also showed two different feels. Again, I'll try a different feel on the uh, double bass drum pattern. These would be triplets kind of things, so you go one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. You'll be accenting the first one with your right kick, second set of triplets with your left, left kick. For instance, one triplet, two triplet, one triplet, two triplet, that kind of effect, you know? So this will help build up your left foot even more. Again, try this first without the metronome. And then as you get more solid, you can add it in. We're playing nice and steady quarter notes on the, on the ride cymbal. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. And that'll help you lock up first with your right foot with the one triplet, and then the two triplet. Okay, let's give it a try. It 
And some closing words on double bass drumming. If you got a metronome, great. But if you're just starting out on double bass, give it some time. You know, you don't have to just throw everything together and say, oh, I have to have this by tomorrow. It may not happen by tomorrow. Then again, it may. Good luck to you. But uh, it's going to take a little bit of time. Don't be so worried about going fast. Of course, the ultimate goal in everybody's mind is, hey, let's go a million miles an hour with the double kicks. And of course, it's going to sound great. But take it nice and easy. The speed will definitely come in time. Nice and slow, even and solid. Those are the things that we're looking for. Do not go too fast too soon. Get comfortable before you add that click. When you feel comfortable, add that click and get it really tight. And good luck to you. Rudiments can also be applied to the bass drums to build up your chops. Let's start with sets of four. Now let's try sets of three. And double strokes. Single paradiddle. Double paradiddle. Triple paradiddle. And finally, the four stroke rough. Perhaps some of you are in private lessons right now and your teacher comes down every week and you're getting a little upset because he keeps asking to hear double strokes and single paradiddles and all these crazy rudiments. And you're saying to yourself, man, I want to play rock. I don't want to play this, this, thanks, bing, bang, boom. Well, I understand what you're saying. I used to say the same thing. Who needed these rudiments? But I think your teacher knows something, and uh, that's that the room is going to help your playing all over the kit. Even these crazy exercises that he gives you are going to help your facility and build up your chops so you can really rock. So you got to give him a chance, and you got to stick with them. We're going to take a few of them right now, and we're going to make them some fun. Let's start with some paradiddles. Single paradiddle. Instead of just playing it on the snare, we're going to try and incorporate some tom-toms. Let's take a look. Now that's not so bad. You're just taking the first stroke of every rudiment and applying it to a tom tom. Any one of your choice. Enjoy. Have fun with it. Thing is, it's going to make you create some new fill ideas, whatever, what have you, instead of just sticking on a snare drum or on a pad, which can be a little boring. But remember, we want to keep them nice. Even you can play these with a the metronome as well. Keep them nice and solid. Let's try adding the bass drums with the tom toms and maybe even a couple of cymbals. The idea here again, first stroke of every rudiment. Let's play a bass drum with it. And uh, if you want to move it from a tom to a cymbal, be my guest, but make sure it's solid with that cymbal. Boom, boom, nice and solid. With your right hand, you'll be using the right kick, and the left hand, you'll be using that left kick. So you're using all four limbs in this one. Let's give it a try. Now that you're starting to get these things solid, and that metronome. Don't forget about that thing. It's going to help you be solid all over the place, even a step further than you think you already are. Believe me, it makes a very big difference, and it's going to really keep you on track. Let's try the same thing with doubles and triples. Again, you're going to be going first two strokes, this time with a double. Boom, boom, digga, digga, boom, boom. All right? Triples, boom, boom, boom. So instead of just hitting that first stroke of every movement, on the doubles, you'll be hitting the first two. And then on triple paradiddles, you'll be hitting the first three. And again, when you're using your right hand on the top, you'll be using the right foot on the bottom. Left hand on top, left foot on the bottom as well. Let's take a look and see what that's going to be like.
Now that you got the whole idea of what's going on here, let's put them all together and mix them all up. And uh, have some fun with it. And if you feel comfortable, get a little faster. Of course, I know you want to go crazy, but make sure it's nice and solid and use that click track before you start really getting fast. Remember, if you don't have it nice and clean in the beginning, you got nowhere to go but down. You're going to just rumble all over yourself and it's going to sound like a big pile of mush. And we don't want that. Good luck. Let's keep it going. Maybe you went to a concert one day and you saw this guy, he's on stage and he's just grooving. Doom, mm, ba, mm, doom, mm, ba. And out of nowhere comes this crazy brrrr, pow. And you turn to your friend and you say, holy cow, did you see what that guy did? Dude, I don't even know what that guy did. Well, welcome to our crazy fills from hell section. You hear a lot of these wild things that people play and I gotta tell you, the whole idea behind them are not that tough. Let's explore a few right now. First one we're going to deal with is called, well, what I refer to as a quad. It has four parts to it. Your right hand, your left hand, your right foot, and your left foot. Put it all together and let's see what we come up with. That didn't look so tough. Now try putting it on the toms and we're going to get even a little faster. You'll see what kind of effect it has and how cool it sounds. Remember, these crazy fills, they're not that crazy and hard to play, but when you're playing them so fast, you don't even know what the heck's going on. But the main thing here is to keep them nice, even, and solid. Again, these can be played with a metronome as well, but take it first by itself, nice and even. You want right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Make each hit solid and definitive. Make sure that when you hit that drum that you're hitting it, not just giving it a little graze. And as you go faster, you're gonna notice that the volume may come down a little bit. You don't want that to happen. You want intensity to grow, crescendo into that roll. As you're going a little faster, make sure your intensity doesn't give up. Keep drilling it in there, but good technique. Keep the wrists coming up. That's what counts the most. Keep them wrists coming up. Let's try it on the toms. Now the great thing about this fill is that you could do it all over the place. I mean you could start at the top, go to the bottom, do it on the snare, do it on your head, I don't care. Have a good time with it. Uh, here's an example of that. This next one might be a little bit easier for you. Uh, it basically has three strokes to it. First one being a flam. We're going to take our left and our right hands on the floor tom and on the snare drum. Bop. That's the first beat. Then right foot and left foot. It's a triplet kind of feel. Uh, you got one triplet, two triplet. Nice and easy. Take it nice and slow. Remember solidity is the key over here. And as we get faster you want to keep that evenness. I know everybody wants to go brrrr right off the bat, but if you don't have it solid and even first, when you get faster, you're just going to tumble all over yourself. Let's try the try.
As I said before, that one's probably going to be a little bit easier for to try out, but remember, the try, meaning three, is uh, not to be fooled around with at high speeds before you master those low speeds. Let's try adding some doubles in with that too. For instance, you're taking a try, one, two, three, and now we're going to add another double stroke on top. So it's going to be one, two, three, four. And when you put it all together, I think it'll sound something like this. Those make excellent song starters. I hope you like it and have fun with it. Now some for the song enders, huh? I think you'll like this one. I refer to this as a quint because it has five parts to it. You're taking your right hand, your left hand, right hand, right foot, left foot. One, two, three, four, five. Let's give it a try and check it out. Like I said before, that makes one heck of a song ender, and you can have fun with that all over the kit as well. Uh, later on, I'll be demonstrating all these for you, and more. As a matter of fact, I'll give you one more. This is a four-stroke rough with the bass drums added in. I think you can figure this one out by yourself. Just a four-stroke rough on the top, and add those two hits on the bottom and bring it back around. Remember, with all these fills, nice and solid. Start slow and work your way fast. But I'll give this one to you fast. Just remember in everything you play, whether it be a rock beat, a paradiddle, any kind of rudiment, or you're playing your fills and double bass all over the place like a madman, the idea is to keep everything even, solid, precise, nice and locked up, and get your timing together. Remember, I'll say it again, I can never say it enough times, if you have a metronome, use it. And if you don't have it, make sure you go out and get one. It's going to be the saving grace of your playing. Save mine. And uh, right now, it's time for me to put everything I did on this tape and put it at the little solo for you. So I'm going to be playing a bunch of different stuff, give you some ideas of uh, how to coordinate some of the things I showed you, for instance a fill with a beat kind of thing, how they can be used together, and uh, maybe give you some of your own ideas. So good luck.
to remember. Number one, relax. Number two, your rebound is especially important at those faster speed levels. Keep those sticks coming up. Number three, a good playing position. Let's keep everything straight on. Number four, your physical actions. Make sure your pinkies don't stick out, elbows coming up. Keep a nice, firm posture. Number five, don't go too fast too soon. Master those slow speed levels before moving faster. And number six, most important, play with a metronome. Need I say more? Well, thank you for watching Rock Solid. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I hope you all learned something. And uh, I'd love to hear your questions and or comments. Please send them in to the number on your screen right here, and I'll be looking forward to hearing from you. I'm Marco Scott, signing off. Take care.